Every 12 seconds, there is a car accident happening in Germany. The majority of times, it's just minor damages to the vehicle. However, it's an annoying process for everyone involved. In this video, we're going to talk about the five things you should do to be able to handle a car accident in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. Before this episode starts, we have a small favor to ask from you. Our goal for this year is to reach 50,000 YouTube subscribers. If you've ever liked any of our videos, if you like this channel, then please hit that subscribe button that's down here at the bottom. The bigger the channel, the bigger the reach, and the more internationals can benefit from our content to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. Thank you very much and enjoy this episode. Number one under utmost importance is to secure the accident site. Yes, so the first thing you need to do is turn on the hazardous lights or emergency lights. Put on your yellow or orange warning vest. It is actually mandatory to carry at least one of those vests in your car. Yes, and if you're on the Autobahn, it is important that you do this before you exit the vehicle for your own safety. You should set up your warning triangle around 50 to 100 meters ahead of the accident to also warn ongoing traffic that there's something happening and maybe the road is blocked. Yes, and this is also mandatory. Every car, including rental cars, should have a triangle included in the vehicle. In case of minor damages just to the vehicle, it is important to clear the road, to kind of like move the vehicles out of the traffic. If you're on the highway or autobahn, then you can go all the way to the right. That lane is specifically created for emergency cases like this one. In case of major damages, it is however super important to not move the vehicle so any other debris. It is important that you stay at the scene. If you are not allowed to move the vehicle, then you should actually not stay in the middle of the highway if that's where you are, but actually position yourself in a safe position to wait for the police and the first responders to arrive. And this is usually behind a crash barrier, which you find also on the highway. Number two, even more important is to care for injured people. Yes, if there are any injured people. Correct. First thing to do if you are okay as well, of course, is to provide first aid. In Germany, before you got your license, you should have had a first aid course, which you can refresh every year. So you should implement that knowledge in the specific case. Very important is to call 112. That is the emergency phone number in Germany. Also, if you call 911, it gets redirected. So don't worry too much about that one. And if you are the one providing help, then you should ask someone else to call the first responders 112 because you are helping other people. As a general side note, in Germany, any person is actually required to stop and assist with first aid if you encounter an emergency situation or any person that is in danger. If you fail to assist, of course, without putting yourself in harm's way, this could actually be prosecuted as a felony and a criminal charge. Wow, that is crazy. So it's actually by law, you need to, if you're capable to, you need to stop and help? Correct. The failing of assist is actually called unterlassene Hilfeleistung. So you're failing to aid. Oh, interesting. Number three is document the accident and collect evidence. This step can be easily overseen, especially if there's high adrenaline running or it's your first time being in a car accident. It's important to stay calm and remember this very important step. So what this involves is that you should collect all the relevant information for all the other parties involved. Number one is ask for the driver's license from the other person and write down their name, address, date of birth. Also important is to ask for their insurance information, including phone number, address, and name, of course. And of course, also write down the driver's, uh, the, the license plate of the car. Yes, definitely. Additional to that, you should take pictures of the damages done, both to your car, if there's any debris on the scene, on the other person's car, pretty much document everything as much as you can. Also super important is to look out for possible witnesses. Usually there's bystanders that either want to assist or that are just curious, but ask the people around you whether they saw the accident and whether they can stay as a witness if it's major damages. And if it's minor damages, write down their personal data so you can reach out to them in case you need a witness later on during the insurance claim. If you have a rental vehicle, this is also the moment where you call the company. There should be a phone number that you can call that's open 24 seven to inform them of the accident. And they will also guide you in the steps that you need to take. Super important and also the majority of cases, there is a form inside the glove compartment box. And if you own the car, you should have this form. You can download it. We have the link in the description box below where you can download this form. And this form is pretty much to guarantee that you collect all the relevant information during the car accident. 
So in case you don't want to remember, oh my God, what do I license plate uh, address and all these things, filling out this form will guarantee that you have all the information to proceed with either a claim to the insurance company or to submit this to the car rental company in case it wasn't your fault and proceed from there. Very important, such an accident report is not to declare liability. It's really just to objectively take down what happened, have all the data in place, and then go move on from there. Now, a very important question that usually gets asked is, should I call the police? Like, do I have to and should I? There's usually two answers to this. It depends. <laughs> you should definitely opt to call the police if a rental car is involved, yourself or the other party or other parties. I mean, it doesn't always just have to be two. Yeah. If someone is injured, if damages are major, if you're arguing with the other party, or if it's a hit and run and the other party actually fled the scene. It's not mandatory to call the police if the damages are minor. Also, if you are negotiating with the other party and they accept responsibility and you exchange information, fill out this report on your own, that also works. The police is not being called for them to actually give an assessment and say who is to blame. They're really called just to assist with the tricky situation as Yvonne mentioned in the previous point. Additional to that, police may not even come if you call it in and the accident is super minor. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And more or less as the last step right after an accident is that you should contact your insurance company. Not maybe at the moment of the scene, but whenever everything has been documented, collected and you're on your way home or you have reached your home. In the case, as I mentioned before, you didn't call the police, the other party who is responsible takes responsibility and you negotiate with them directly how you can handle this situation, it's not always necessary to file an insurance claim. As an example, my sister-in-law and the husband were in a car accident. It was actually a relatively minor accident and the other party took full responsibility because they crashed from behind. They exchanged information, that's also very important. You still need to gather information also of their insurance company. However, the other person said, look, because the accident or the repair of this is gonna be less than my deductible with the car insurance, let me cover the cost from my pocket. We don't need to file a claim and that's what they did. But bear in mind, they had exchanged information from one another. Right, that's important that in case the other party does not end up paying, you can still file a claim with their insurance. Why is this often, um, especially with minor damages, uh, um, a common route to go? Because the moment you file a claim with your own insurance, because you are liable for a damage, is that you often get bumped up in your tariff for the next year and have to pay more insurance. So depending on the situation, you can avoid that by paying it from your own pocket. Correct. However, let's say it's not such a clear situation or it's major damages involved, then the following applies. If you have at least some part of liability, you're not 100% sure, but you think, okay, that I'm not completely innocent here, you should also contact your insurance company and let them know of the incident, what happened, so that they are prepared and can move forward. However, if the other party is 100% liable and would like it to go through their insurance, you need to file a claim with their insurance company so that they can move forward. Also a very interesting point here is that we learned in the US, at least in Florida, the state, is that there, when there's a car accident, actually the person who is not responsible files the claim first and kind of like their insurance kicks in. And if there's anything exceeding, then the other party's uh, insurance uh, clicks in. In Germany, that is not the case. The liable person is the one that pays. Well, the insurance. The insurance, of course. Now, during our research, we found a company that's called Fairforce One that actually handle all of this bureaucracy and the claiming process and the communication with the various insurance companies for you. Now, we don't have experience with the company. However, the reviews on Trustpilot are quite good. And especially if you are unfamiliar with processes, your German might not be as good, you could potentially reach out to such a company to get the hassle out of your way. Because often this can take weeks or months, um, the communication with insurances. They can try to change the situation and claim liability differently. It's not always so clean cut, especially um, with accidents. Mind you, Fairforce One, the website is only in German, but the process seems to be quite straightforward. If you have a car accident outside of Germany, but still within the EU zone, the process is pretty much the same. If you, for whatever reason, have a disagreement with the other party and the other party does not want to provide their car insurance information, there is a service that you can call called the Central Service of Car Insurers, which will tell you the information of that person's car insurance. The only thing you need to provide is the license plate number, and then they're able to give you all the insurance information. 
or the car insurance information of that person. You can simply call the phone number that's here on the screen. The service is free of charge and it's in English and it's available in the EU and Schengen area. Now we learned the hard way that carrying an accident report form is actually quite helpful, especially if you're traveling within Europe. We had a minor incident in Portugal once and well, hold and behold, the other party involved Portuguese didn't speak English. We don't speak Portuguese. Spanish didn't really work. So that was a very big communication error. Yes, if we would have had the form in Portuguese, we knew we were going to Portugal, we could have filled the form together. However, in this case, we had to call the police as an inter intermediary and translator because there was A, disagreement and B, a language barrier. This form is called the European Accident Form and we leave the link in the description box below where you can download it for multiple languages. It's important that you carry two copies of each foreign language other than English with you one for you that you can fill in in English and one for the other party that they can fill out in their mother tongue. If you're going to be driving on the Autobahn in Germany, we have a whole video explaining how this works, the tips you should know and the rules you should follow, which you can check out here on the left. Drive safe and respectfully and see you next time. Cheers! Cheers. Smoothly. <laughs> but you're not listening, wa? <laughs> this should be your cue. In any emergency situation... <laughs> What's it called again?